for being here. Thank you for being part of the suicide prevention movement where we're focused on making suicide, especially teen suicide, a thing of the past. And we're super happy that you're joining us. Now, coming up, get ready and get excited because we're going to go into Wonderland. We're going to go into the land where wonder is reborn. And we're going to be exploring that with one of the best guides in the world because literally this woman traveled the world in search of this journey that she wants to help all of us go on. And let me tell you what, I'm just, couldn't we all use, I'm going to tell you, this is what the truth is. We could all use a little more wonder in our life. So coming into the wonderland, Margie, come on in, come into the studio, turn your camera on and unmute yourself. And we're just going to have a chat. There you are. Woo! <laughs> oh, the wonder of technology. <laughs> I'm being grateful and sarcastic at the same time. There we go. You know, <laughs> it has allowed this international experience. We have had both participants and panelists from around the world. And you're like right next door by comparison. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so, Margie, I could read your bio, but I'm not sure anybody would believe it. Huh. I mean, you're what, you're doing, what you're doing now and Wall Street, I'm like going, huh? <laughs> so, Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love it if you just shared the Wall Street story with us so that we get a sense <laughs> of how this journey landed you here. Well, um, I, uh, I, I went, I uh, kind of grew up in the New York area and then my dad decided he was gonna run a space science research center in Missouri. And so, Whoa. so badly that I graduated from high school in Missouri, I thought it was fabulous, but, um, so I was very fortunate for me to go to school in Europe for a year uh, where I traveled all around. And uh, Jackie, the funny thing is I, you know, I traveled, I, I did uh, homestays with different families in Germany and, and uh, France. And, uh, I pro and I went to Russia when it was really the Cold War and it was literally cold. Um, I bet. But, you know, in Moscow, I saw that a lot of people didn't look Western, they looked Asian, and I probably got fascinated with Asia. So uh, that's a long way about saying, um, so I got interested in Asia, spent a lot of time in Japan, um, learning the language and figuring out I didn't really want to graduate, I didn't want to teach Japanese history. So I couldn't figure out what to do. So I went to wall. Not me, not me, not me. But wait, wait, wait. we bleeped out. We, we've got it. We had a little bit of a tech thing and we lost the most important sentence. So somewhere between you figured out you didn't want to teach Japanese history and not me, we missed that. What was <laughs> Let's see. So yeah, so I, I didn't know what to do. So I went to Wall Street. I spoke Japanese. I uh, didn't want to teach Japanese history. So uh, I spent seven years on Wall Street trying to figure out what I was doing there. <laughs> so I wasn't supposed to be there either because I'm really an entrepreneur. So I started running my own um, headhunting executive recruiting business. Or not living in New York and kind of living in Tokyo and finding Japanese who spoke English for American companies in Japan. But, oh. you know, it's a little quirky and... I did that for quite a long time and got to travel a lot. <laughs> I'm just going to say, hold it. There are riches in the niches. I mean, <laughs> if you're going to niche down in the recruiting world, let's see. I'm going to find English speaking Japanese <laughs> corporate people and I'm going to go to Tokyo to find them. Now, that's a narrow niche. It's a narrow niche and it was a heck of a good time because it was that that narrow when everybody thought Japan was the coolest place. I mean, I love Japan. And, um, but it, that was a time when everyone was idealizing Japan. So I got all this free publicity, but you really, you should have been my marketing person. What 
riches in the niches, I love it. <laughs> but it wasn't always like that. And then I decided I needed to do other things. So I got really interested in, I was always really honestly interested, what makes people tick? What gives them joy and how come they get depressed? So I started studying psychotherapy. I became a, a psychotherapist. And then I was always looking at other things like acupuncture and how does it work and past life work. So, you know, it's been a constant journey. I think since I was born, I'm kind of like a, an adventurer, you know, and I was always jealous of guys because I thought, well, man, they can do it. Why can't I? And then I decided as I go older, I can do it too. <laughs> there well, we go. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you just, you just gave a really, really great opening, and I'm going to walk right into it. This brain that we have is the right. world's greatest search engine. Right. And when we ask it a question like, why can't I? The brain is going to go to its file cabinet and find every single possible reason why you can't do something. And yes. It, took, it takes some maturity before we start asking a more powerful question, like, how can I? Good point. Uh, you know, the file cabinet can get uh, messed up depending on conditioning. And mm -hmm. you know, I don't know that many people realize that conditioning starts so young. So, oh. you know, the first seven years especially, wowie zowie, if things are a little bit your parents think you should be a girl girl and you like to climb trees or fight with the boys or, or you know, bicycle too far down the street or all that kind of stuff. So that conditioning is such a big, oh, um, yeah, the, the mind can be wonderful. I, and I think it's more our energy, our heart, our true essence. And that too can get, I, I don't know if we can find it in our brain, but it gets awfully stifled by conditioning. We, and I think we've got a lot of that going on in our world right now with uh, mass media and um, oh. you know, there's a, a, an expression in Japanese called kintaro ame, where you've got a roll of candy and wherever you cut the candy, all look exactly alike. It doesn't translate so well, I realize. But in, the point is that, um, things are a bit too homogenized and I think a lot of people get lost in the humdrum you know they no longer take the risk or they're encouraged to take the risk and get the wonderful rewards from trying things and maybe you don't succeed and maybe you do so okay. I you know, agree with you we started... become... go ahead uh, no, I was just gonna say I agree. We become a risk averse society. A fear driven society means we don't take the risks, we don't get the rewards. Yes. And somehow along the way, I think we become awfully homogenized. You know, everybody's kinda I mean there's a kind of uh, for what's considered normal. And I wow. I'm kind of a paradigm buster. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I just want to encourage people to look beyond the norm. Um, and, and I mean that in the po most positive of senses. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we could do, you know, that, that isn't positive. But uh, there's, that's why I really look to wonder. And I really want to encourage us all to uh, open our open our hearts and and our our sense of observation and joy and sometimes that's very hard to get to especially maybe right now so maybe we just especially need it's especially needed now margie so let's go there surely let's go there yeah so if you opened your heart to wonder if someone said i haven't been to wonderland <laughs> you know, since I read Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, you know, I haven't been there since I went with Dorothy to the Emerald City. Yeah, you know, I don't have a sense of wonder anymore. Right. What would be the first thing you'd say to them? That's a really good question. I would say start with anything that gives you any sense of 
awe, any sense of peace. Um, and I can give you an example. Tonight, I was actually out walking for an hour and, um, and I had a nice walk when I came back and I was preparing, you know, to talk with you. And I, it took me a few minutes to look out the window and realize, oh my gosh, there's a gorgeous sunset. And what I really, this is a long way about saying, I was out walking and it was pleasant, but suddenly there was this gorgeous sunset and I almost missed it because I was busy getting ready to talk to you. Oh, and when I looked out the window, it was extraordinary. So what I'm, my point here is, if we can just find anything that's like a wow, and it often is a little wow. The other night I was walking my dogs really late and I noticed there's this odd shaped piece of grass and catching the streetlight. And I bent down and it was a dragonfly clinging to a piece of grass on an angle. So, you know, that's what made it look odd. And it was just there for the night. And it was so cute. And I, was, I wanted to be really careful the dogs didn't sniff it or bother it. And it's those things that I think, even if you're feeling down or like, when is this virus going to be over or anything like that? It just, it was just such a sense of like, oh my, not only was it there and sort of tucked into the grass, but I could find it. But it was also like, how did it get there? You know, and, and, it, and, I, and I couldn't even kind of figure out what color it was. Was it brown? Was it gold? Was it this? Was it that? Anyway, I, I think a lot of that detail can inspire wonder. And, and uh -huh. you know, if you don't have wonder, sometimes I think, um, oh, it sounds so corny, but sometimes, you know, just looking around and seeing how we can be helpful, you know, um, somebody's mail ends up in our box and we drop it off at their box or take it up to their door. And I mean, maybe these days with COVID people might be scared of your point is, you know, anything that could give us a little bit of um, helping others, I always feel more helpful. So, I mean, more happy. So it feels like it's not a bad, you know, if it's not joy, sometimes you get a little like, I help this person, even in a tiny, tiny way. All right. So being helpful, even micro helpful. Yes. I'm going to flip that and say that the other side of that coin is that if we're looking to reawaken wonder in the world, another side is to ask someone to do something for you, to give them that experience of being needed being helpful, being Good important, point. and watching them step into that yeah. is a way of reawakening wonder in yourself because the number of people who think, I can't ask because everybody will say no, and so they don't ever ask. And right. if they just took the baby step to ask someone to do one small thing for them, would you, can you catch my mail tomorrow? Can you, you know, one small, easily doable thing might just open that shelf because we have gotten very disconnected. True, it really opens from people's other. energy. Yes. So I'm a firm believer that the greatest act of service I have ever received from someone was when they asked me to help. Very, very good good point and a point that i think sometimes people miss sometimes it's much harder to give than to really receive oh it is it is this whole um discussion around what is giving and what is receiving we could probably go there for like maybe a day or a week um because when you're asking someone to help you you're actually giving them an opportunity you're actually giving them a sense of recognition that they have something to give and right. in a world that we're feeling disempowered I'm just all of a sudden I hadn't connected this to wonder but I'm um, <laughs> wondering yeah <laughs> yeah and I you know coming back to what you were asking about um you know I I think um I think it's really important to um 
open up wonder and to support it. And I feel very strongly that the world is just full of infinite potential. That's a David Baum of physicist. And there's a film about it just recently put out, but the world is full of infinite potential. And I think it's very important to have inquiring minds and to really look at the positive. I think also when we focus on the dark and what's wrong and what's super homogenized wrong right now, I think our, our vision gets so narrow. We get sort of trapped in these, in these um, not only negative, but narrow points of view and wonder just drops away. I call it the negative echo chamber. <laughs> and when you were talking about it's getting homogenized, I'm like, Yes, if you're listening to the people who think the same way that you do, and that's the only point of view that you're hearing, then you end up in an echo chamber. Whether that echo chamber is empowering yes. or disempowering, is it expansive or constricting? That's right. a direct personal experience. And I invite people, hey, check in. Yeah, just do the check in because I think of wonder as being the most expansive state I can imagine. Yes, and, and it's right there, it's free. Um, Whoa, it's and free! In fact, and in fact, I just set up this group, um, and I really invite you all to come to my Facebook page called uh, Wayfinding the Cosmos. And oh. I named it Wayfinding the Cosmos uh, instead of Navigating the Cosmos, because I wanted people to kind of think, well, what does Wayfinding mean? But to me, it also felt like there was a there are different paths, different ways you could go. And I thought about the word cosmos because I want to support us all to think in an expansive, infinite potential. There are so much wonder and fascination and thrilling things out there. So the the web the website is um Wayfinding the Cosmos and Soul Journeys with me, Margie Haas. So we'll put those links in there for people. Go ahead, though. Yeah. What will they find when they come into your Wayfinding group? I'm doing Soul Journeys. And um, what I mean by that is um, I'm a coach and a mentor. And I deal with people with their, their, where they're stuck, where they want to grow, and where they are looking for spiritual growth, uh, any kind of personal growth, and wonder. How, how can I find wonder if I don't have it? So the website will be, I, I just started it. I'm so thrilled, so please go look at it. It's so Yay! cool. It's so cool. Um, and um, I, uh, I'm doing podcasts and interviews with different people that I, I admire, mountain climbers, um, spiritual seekers who are really fascinating stories and I'm going to run um, in groups of people and um, you know uh, different groups by it's a private group by invitation and I really really invite you all to come and I also have a website like that so what I'm really doing is all kinds of soul journeys inner soul journeys and 3d this world um, uh, there's a mountain climber who went to Everest without oxygen, um, and I'd like to talk to him. And um, I, I'd like to talk to the guy uh, that, um, had, well, how to say this quickly? He he's um, discovered, rediscovered how the ancient Polynesians and Hawaiians navigated the the um, islands and the Pacific Islands, South Pacific Islands going from island from to island by the stars and the tides. And they didn't have compasses. They had no instruments. And, uh, um, and it is called wayfinding. They look at the tides, they, the birds flying, the clouds, you know, it's so anyway, um, to talk to different people as part of this whole venture that I'm on, um, because I, I want, to remind people that we there are infinite potentials, there are fascinating stories out there. 
that the world is much more amazing than maybe we learned in school. Like maybe there were far more uh, sophisticated cultures than even ours. Maybe they built buildings with sound. And I don't mean maybe, I think that Egyptian monuments, the pyramids, how, how did they get those blocks up there to make those big pyramids? It wasn't the way we think it was. It wasn't slaves dragging rocks up hills. It was probably sound and technologies we don't even understand. So, and there are people who have really looked at this. And I find it really exciting and it opens up our possibilities. Man, if people could do that with sound, what could we do? Maybe that's our next dimension. Maybe we'll be building things in completely different ways with our own bodies, but we need to learn about that. And I also think, you know, we get into, um, if you really start looking, I think we're eternal beings having human lifetimes. We're, consciousness is never born and never dies. And I can hardly even understand that. It seems like maybe everything comes from one way we could describe our mind. I don't mean our brain, but everything comes from within us. So what does that mean? Well, I, I, I look at different people talking about that, both yeah. you know, the Western physics point of view and the Tibetan guru's points of view, not because I want people to get religion. I want them to get a spiritual sense that we're, we're never born and we never die. You know, Chief Seattle said, we're never born. We're ne we, ne we, we change worlds when we die, but we're never born, we never die. And you know, I'm just, it was, it was just this lovely thing listening to you talk and I'm going, yeah, you want people to not get religion. You want them to get perspective. Yes, and I, I want to support them to grow and feel delighted that they're growing and that, that they're not stuck in their humdrum. Cool. All right. Getting people unstuck from humdrum would <laughs> certainly be a prerequisite to getting them into this world of wonder. So, yes, or, you know, I support people to tiptoe. They might feel like they're, they can't get out of the humdrum. <laughs> but what if something, if something causes your energy to go up and you feel kind of, well, I'm curious, that's enough. That's enough for me to give support to people and maybe we can expand their point of view just a little more. Got it. So it's not about eating the elephant. It's about being willing to get near the elephant. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's just get close to the concept of wonder. Yes, and you know, wonder can be so tiny, that dragonfly, you know, in, in the street light. Um, or birds flying over, you know, uh, you may know that I have this passion to study um, birds and I especially like swallowtail kites, which is this gorgeous high flying hawk. It's just beautiful here in, in, in Florida where I live and, and throughout the, the Southeastern United States. And so many people ask me, what are you looking at? And, and I'm, especially when I'm standing on the street and they're curious, which is good, curiosity, wonder, but <laughs> You know, so they asked me and, and they, and I said, have you ever seen them before? And they go, uh-uh. And, and when I describe it, they go, uh-huh. And I, I'm not knocking people, but it's amazing. They, they don't see them. They mm -hmm. just don't. And these are beautiful birds. In fact, the people who see them are like, oh my God, the most beautiful bird. I, it's funny. I've done talks on this and, you know, men get crazy poetic about them all these men are like the most gorgeous birds straight out of the movie Avatar, this and that. And they are, they're gorgeous. And my point is they're right there and they're free. And then I start looking and it's like, how do they fly like that? I know it's sort of an obvious thing, but how do birds fly? And when you really start looking, it's like, wait a oh, minute. It, it's not so obvious. Birds no, have hollow bones. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a reason that they're a little more aerodynamic. Um, that, you know, somebody used to say, you know, oh, you know, you eat like a bird. And then I was doing research for uh, one of my college projects. And I found out a bird eats like 300 times its own weight every day because right, it spends right. so much energy flying. And I'm like, oh, I am so glad I don't eat like a bird. You know? 
And it shows how they really don't understand. And mm -hmm. birds eat a lot and stuff it in their gullet. I didn't even know what a gullet was for a long time. But that's sort of like an extra stomach sort of before they, you know, when they're busy, they just stow it down there and then digest it further. So anyway, um, they're so just- I'm thinking you know, chipmunks now. I've gone down the yeah. rabbit hole. I'm like, you know, oh yeah, chipmunks do that. And you know, what else does that? And you know, the, the, the reality is there are so many interesting things that are just, and people are like, but it doesn't matter. And I'm like, you're right. right. The facts don't matter. The experience experience of allowing yourself to go on the exploration. The experience is what matters. Wonder is not something you think about. Wonder is something you experience. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I don't want to leave people out if they don't feel much of it. Um, you know, and there's, there's also, um, you know, doing experiences because you wonder about, wonder about things, and that's actually a different use of the word wonder in a way. But, you know, I do, um, I work with people that are stuck or depressed and um, I do sort of, I don't do therapy because I'm not licensed where I live now, but, you know, I coach them and I mentor them. And uh, one of the things that's kind of fascinating is to do uh, past life work with people. And I, I do a lot of it and then I teach other people how to teach it. And um, it's amazing that right there in our consciousness, somehow people, sometimes people, well, there's a theory maybe we make up the past lives that we access, but I can tell you, I've had these amazing experiences will come in, somebody's traumatic, got a traumatic experience, and they come in and suddenly, you know, they, they shift. I had this guy come in, he's actually a famous guy on, on uh, Broadway when I lived in New York City, and um, he came to me and he's said, uh, when I was a little boy, we lived in Scarsdale, and, and I kept asking my dad, well, how come we're not living in Hawaii? And his dad got really angry at him because he wouldn't stop talking about Hawaii. So he came to me and he goes, what is that? I, I Now I'm a grown man, and I, I don't know why I was talking about Hawaii. So turns out when we did work, you know, I helped him one session only, uh, and one session changed his life. He found out that in a past life, he had been a woman and it was the war and he was sent as a young woman to, to be the entertainment coordinator for the troops coming back from South Pacific in World War II. And um, he, he, loved, he loved the experience and wanted to stay in Hawaii and loved being able to support all these soldiers coming home. And he got on a plane and he said, I knew I shouldn't get on that plane. He got on the plane and the plane blew up. And it, it's a sad ending to that lifetime. And, but my point here is he felt so really connected to that energy from a past life. Mm -hmm. Now for you or for me, that might not be anything that would make any sense. But my point here is, you know, I, I think I can talk about the theory about why I think past lives really exist, but, but the bigger point right now is he shifted. His energy was so different when he left and he was so excited about it that All he right. was able to figure out why he wanted to go to back to Hawaii. So what changed in his life? What would be the tangible, observable shift that someone on the outside of his life could notice? I think for him, um, and in a certain sense, you know, to be honest, he wasn't the most um, wonder-filled person. He's kind of well known, but um, but for him, for him specifically, I saw, and his friends would see, his body changed. He felt more um, at peace with his bigger being. Um, I, I, it's that might not be the best example to use. I don't know. It's a, I think it's a great example. One, because anytime that we have a fascination about something that yes. we have no clue why that we have in childhood, that's just like a great place to wonder. You know, I wonder if that has a meaning. And we were talking about this in other contexts, like about animals. You know, yeah. I, had, I had a cardinal that was flying into my dining room window every day. 
wow. every day until I made a change in my business. And then the cardinal stopped flying into my window. It still lives in the tree. I mean, it still lives in my live oak tree right outside my window. There's a whole family and this is, he's been there for years, but he has never flown into the window again. Yes. And, and so I, I wonder, and earlier today we had someone who sees through the eyes of animals, thinks that seeing into the eyes of animals you know, brings us to a place where we open our intuition. And I'm absolutely. like, it's all about, are you willing to allow yourself to notice what's different? Are you allowing yourself to notice that what, oh, trust me, this was a rough one. You know, I didn't know there was something about me that was a little different. Yeah. We all have this fear of being different and it's a evolutionarily sound fear. It's also having something about you or your family that's a little different. One of the six primary suicide risk indicators beyond mental health. So there's a reason why we're kind of concerned about this. But what is about, what? about being perceived as different? You know, like yes. reading and, animals and talking to, you and know. not valued for your differences. And, and the whole point of the conversation um, in the show is yes. what if we normalized uniqueness, that you weren't different? Yes, although, Jackie, can you normalize uniqueness in a way it's unique because it is unique, but I, I do think, well, I think we're saying in a way the same thing. It's like, um, it's, it's important to support variety, mm -hmm. the lack of the humdrum. And, and, um, and again, you know, I think if you've got wonder or if you can connect to wonder and I, I don't want to, you know, belabor the point of wonder too much because, but I do think we, it's, it's like, um, wonder is connected to joy and, and, and wanting to live. The Japanese word is ikigai, the, the wanting to live. And of course it's the antecedent, the opposite from feeling, um, the, that desire of hopelessness and perhaps wanting to kill yourself. So I think, well, wow. Yes. You know, it's, um, and actually I'm going to go there for just a second because people taking their own lives, having done a fair amount of research on this topic now, they don't want to die. No, they just can't figure out how to live. Right. So and that's where wonder comes into this conversation because someone whose life has elements of wonder in it, every single element of wonder moves them further away from the ledge. Right. But, you know, I, I think to be fair, we have to be careful to just talk about wonder because some people are so stuck. It's like wonder schmunder. How do you get to wonder? So I think, you know, um, just being willing to, um, to stop and explore and, and to reach out for any sense of, of purpose, again, looking at even small things, but I think, um, I, I think in a way, personally, I don't think we have much choice. Suicide is not a way out because what happens is we're eternal beings. So you don't get out that way, you, <laughs> you, you know? So, I mean, it's, it behooves all of us to start helping people who are troubled as oh much as you can, but, it, but, and that's where I really want to support people um, on their spiritual paths. You know, what, what does give you a sense of purpose? Mm -hmm. So what does, what does make you want to get up in the morning and not pull the covers over your head? And we all have days like that. Um, but, but I, I think, you know, so that's my commitment as a coach and as, as, um, as a mentor And this website also is called wayfinding your, your, um, wayfinding the cosmos, um, dot com. And awesome. I actually offer a personal guide as a free gift called the rebirth of wonder. And if you go to my website, 
uh, wayfinding the cosmos forward slash gift. Uh -huh. Aha. Find, and if you give me your email, then I will happily, you can happily get your personal free guide to give you some tips on how to get going with soul voyages. So I think doing voyages or doing exploration internally and, and um, externally, you know, in the spiritual worlds, the inner, inner dimensions, out in third dimensional world, that's one way. And I, I offer some tips on how people can begin to connect to wonder. What a great Sometimes idea. Sometimes just being in the question is a big deal, so. Yeah, absolutely. Being in the question is a big deal. It is. And, you know, the questions. The first question, and, you know, we didn't start out here, but maybe we'll end here. What is wonder? What is wonder? Well, I, I think we've skirted around it. Um, I think it's, it's a sense of, actually, it's, wow, I don't even know necessarily what I'm looking at or what I'm feeling, but I'm, my, my energy is open, my heart is open. I'm, I'm wanting to know more or I'm, want, or I'm wanting to just be with what I see, with beauty, with, with awe, with, wow, I don't know what I'm looking at, but it gives me an up feeling. You know, gives me a feeling of, of wow. You know, I, I, it's, it's, I, I'd like to, to go on and on about more time. I, I do want to say that in, um, if you get my free gift, I am offering a few um, free 30-minute uh, sessions to talk to me, and we can explore this on a one-to-one -one basis more to see if that's something that um, how, how do you access wonder? Or how do you be with wonder? Or how do you get rid of the stuck places to get to the wonder, you know? Got it. Got it. That's important. How do you get rid of the stuck places to get to the wonder? Okay. So the link is wayfindingthecosmos.com forward slash, slash gift. gift. Yes. And so the link's been tested and verified and all of those good things and validated. And it is now in the chat and it will be in the show notes for And everyone. please come and, and see my Facebook group, which is a private group. I welcome you into it. It's very cool. And I'm going to have lots and lots of interesting information, stories, podcasts, and I'll be inviting people within that group to join the group to talk about specific Got it. And it's that way link. Finding the cosmos. It's way finding the cosmos. There we go. Yeah. We found that on Facebook and that link is also going to be in the chat as soon as I can get my cursor to go back <laughs> to the chat. So there we go. Now both links are there. We'll have them in the show notes for everyone. And I am just so delighted that you brought your journey into the land of wonder into this conversation because anything that pulls the energy into a more expansive space, anything that gives a perspective that helps prevent people from getting caught up in the negative echo chamber, not seeing any other options, because right. that's the, the prerequisite for someone taking their own life, is yeah. they have to believe that's the best and sometimes the only opportunity, the only option at the time. Right. And a sense of wonder negates that conversation. Someone who has a sense of wonder, as far as I'm concerned, is pretty much suicide proof. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like the vaccine, if there, if we could dare call it with that name. You know, I just I think that there's a way to prevent people from having the problem, and that's why I do this show. So yeah. if the problem is that you're in a place where you helplessness and hopelessness and not seeing that there's ever a way for life to be any better. So death seems like a good alternative. Right. To prevent that, anything that keeps people even imagining that they might someday be willing to experience a sense of wonder. I mean, just that little bit of an opening exactly. is enough. 
it's it's something to aspire to and um you know connected to wonder is joy and an opening it's it's obviously an opening and yeah. it, it it's to me the word wonder is is positive and sad to say there's just no suicide and taking one's own life just puts yourself in a hole button and you have to come back and do it again I've, i i you don't know, mean that there's a, there's a perspective on karma and there's a perspective on reincarnation and both of those play into a bigger perspective on this eternalness right. of our life and that we kind of borrow the human suit for a few decades. Exactly. Because yeah. we're and, eternal. And, and, and if somebody has that perspective, yes. that changes the conversation from the get-go. And does. someone who has a different perspective than being willing to stop being busy long enough to be curious and on the curiosity path you might find your way back yes. to wonder and i do want to say that you know one of the things that i look at and encourage is for everybody to be the entrepreneur of their own possibilities in life which means that we can all be different and it goes back to one of your questions earlier you know, variety is wonderful and that we're not all the same is a source of wonder. Um, that we're not all the same. Even twins are yes. not the same. So oh, it's yeah. not about how you look. It is about the essence of who you are. Yes, exactly. And celebrating that uniqueness. When I said earlier, you know, making that the norm normative, you know, making it normative that we are all unique, making this the accepted way. It's like, oh, wait, you mean I'm special? And so are you. So wait a minute, how can I be special if you are? And we get into this whole negotiation and the reality is? Yes. You're unique. And yes. so is the person next to you. And so is the person on the other side of you. And from that perspective of acceptance, that we're supposed to be unique. We're supposed to have our unique perspective. And, we're supposed to have I, our unique thoughts. What I want to do with people is to support them to take journeys. I call them journeys. It's coaching, it's mentoring, it's listening mm -hmm. to other people's experiences. Um, to get a sense about, well, how do you grow your own or identify and nurture and expand your sense of uniqueness, your sense of wonder? There we go. All right. Margie, thank you thank for coming you. on the show. Thank you. It's a lot of fun to talk with you. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to talk with you. So we will see you in Wayfinding the Cosmos and everyone can go to wayfindingthecosmos.com forward slash gift and grab all the goodies. And, and it, there will be a few sessions in there. Mm -hmm. um, I, can, I offer a few free sessions. That, um, please sign up if you'd really like to do that once you get your free gift. And there join we go. my Facebook group. I really want you guys there. <laughs> Me too, Jackie. I joined as soon as I got the link from you. That you know, just so you'll know. Okay. Thank you. Have a wonderful night, Margie. You too. All the best.